Hey guys, it's Amber and I'm with Wow Embossing Powder and Grace Yelly Design today for an Instagram collaboration hop. Of course, I've also added a video and I have four awesome cards to share with you guys today. Let me talk a little bit about the coloring and we'll get more into the hop. So I'm starting off with this Coffee Love digital stamp and I'm using the B9 family. So B93, 95, 97, and 99 to color these flowers. So it's the same formula I always use for my flowers. So I put shadow at the base, shadow where the petals overlap, and then also where Gracie has been kind enough to put in some suggestions of where shadow would be in the creases of the petal and the tips of the petal. For the leaves, I'm gonna be using YG91, 93, and 99. And I used a desaturated palette here because I wanted to use this digital paper background. So if you look in the background, you can see there's an awesome digital paper back there and it has words about coffee on it and it's a really distressed kind of looking background. So if you've been following me recently, then you know I've really gotten into digital stamps and what I love to do is drop a digital paper behind the stamp so that I don't have to color a background. I like to spend the majority of my time coloring the image, the flowers, in this case also the coffee cup. So if I can use a digital paper, it just makes my day. So this digital paper is also from Gracie Ellie and it is from the Coffee Love paper pack. And there's so many great options in that pack. So for the center, I'm using the same greens that I use for the leaves. And then for the coffee cup and lid, I'm gonna use warm gray, so W00, one, three, and five. I'll be sure to list all the markers that I use in my blog post. Um, so when I'm setting up my digital images to print, I usually do it in Photoshop and I will set up my canvas as five and a half by eight and a half so that I can print on a half sheet of cardstock. That just makes it a little more manageable for me. And then I'll set up guidelines to show me an A2 sized area. Then I'll blow up my images past that A2 sized area because my printer does not print all the way to the edge of the paper. Um, so I need to make it larger and then I trim it down to size. It was at this point that I realized, hold up, I need to do some embossing on this card. So what I've done is I've grabbed the brand new mixed media embossing brush from Wow. This is such a cool product, you guys. So. Um, mine is brand new and so it's super juicy. You can see that the, it's just a bottle of the gel and then it has almost like a nail polish brush on it. You want to make sure you get some of the excess gel off of not just the brush but also the handle because as you're using it, gravity will have that gel kind of slide down the handle. So just kind of scrape off the handle onto the bottle. You'll see it works really well for my center here, but because some of that gel was leaking down onto my leaves, I'm gonna get a little bit of bleed out on my leaves and you'll see that in the final photos. I'll point that out. So here I'm using clear matte dull. Now, this was kind of more of a vintage distressed looking card, so I didn't wanna add a lot of gloss to the card, so I opted for the clear matte dull. And I, I'm only going to do the center, the leaves, and then I decided to do the lid of the coffee cup. So this doesn't get glossy, it'll stay dull, but what's cool about it is when the receiver of the card feels it, there's a very tactile feel to it. It's obviously dimensional and raised, but the coffee cup lid actually feels like a coffee cup lid because it feels like plastic. Here I'm just gonna use the, um, I'm gonna use Y26 and Y28 to color the coffee cup wrapper here. This is one of my favorite combinations for a yellow gold or almost like a yellow ochre color. I just think it's really pretty. And so around here you're gonna see, so some of my embossing gel kind of oozed out past the leaves. And so you can see a little bit of a halo around a couple of the leaves. So here I'm using, again, the mixed media embossing brush here, and it works perfect for your large areas. And you can see it stays matte, but adds such a cool texture. I really enjoyed that. So here you can see the finished card and you can see on that smallest leaf, that little halo that I was talking about there. And then here's a couple close ups so you can see the clear matte doll way up close. And I just love how this card turned out. I think it's so fun. Moving on to the next card, we're gonna use the Wow Embossing Pen to add 
some embossing to our digital stamps and so this stamp is called sweetness and I thought it was just so cute so I filled in some areas and I'm going to use sparkling sand wow embossing powder which is part of the dockside trio this is one of their newer trios the three colors in this set are absolutely gorgeous I've used it a number of times when you're using a glitter embossing powder, be sure to shake up your container first and then lightly tap your cardstock. This is not where you wanna flick it because the majority of your glitter is gonna fall off. You also wanna heat from the back when you're using your glitter embossing powders. This is the, gem, the gemstone trio and I'm gonna be using tanzanite for that pink heart up at the top. And same thing, I'm going to use the, do I use the embossing pen? I do, I use the embossing pen to fill in the heart and then we're gonna emboss that. So there's definitely, don't think that just because you're using a digital stamp that you've lost the opportunity to heat emboss because you're not stamping with inks. You can definitely do it. I've also heard that if you're using an inkjet printer, you can, um, if you put your embossing powder on quick enough, you can emboss it straight out of the printer. I have a laser printer and that doesn't really work with laser printing, but the embossing pins, the media tool are fantastic to be able to add uh, embossing powder to your project. So here for the leaves, I'm going to use YG2123 and YG63. I'm gonna show very little coloring in the rest of this video. I may show you just one leaf, one flower petal so that you can see the technique, but my coloring is very similar. However, I am gonna show you a little bit more detail in that iris that I do because that coloring was very different. So for the flower petals, I'm using RV52, RV63, and RV66. Same thing, I add shadow to the base to where the petals overlap and then in any of the creases. I felt like the pinks of the flower and the tanzanite powder clashed a little bit. They weren't quite the same tone, so I decided to add B00, just flicks here and there into the petals because there's some purple in that tanzanite. And that I felt kind of blended together a little bit more and here's the finished card. So for the cone, I did not go all the way to the stamp edges because I didn't want to lose my black lines. So I kind of just colored it in the middle and left things a little sketchy, just like the illustration was sketchy. Moving on to the next card, I'm going to use the Cosmic Trio by WOW, and this is designed by Seth Apter. We're going to use the color Sea of Tranquility, which is a beautiful color blend. There's a little bit of metallic in there and lots of different shades of teal. And I just think it's so beautiful and goes really well with her flowers. So I've just hand drawn on some curved stripes here and I'm gonna fill that in with a wow embossing pen. And in retrospect, I probably should have curved the shading of this cup as well, but my markers were so dry, I really struggled to color that cup. I definitely need refills. So I'm just gonna sprinkle on the powder. Same thing, I'm gonna heat this from the back and I'm just using my craft pick just to clean up the edges around the leaves there that kind of go through those stripes. And I used a Sakura Micron pen, or you can use any fine liner that you have, just to reinforce those stamp lines so that it was more noticeable as it goes through those embossed stripes there. So you can see this is my half sheet of paper. So this is exactly how it prints out. And then I went ahead and put my sentiment at the bottom and I cut that out into a strip and stacked those here. And I just think this is just such a cute card. I love the background. The background is from the Rustic Wood Paper Pack and the last three of my cards use a background from that Rustic Paper Pack. For my last card, I used this gorgeous stamp from the Family Love stamp set and I'm using Y13 to add a outline of yellow around the edges. I'm following along with this inspiration photo. Basically, I just Googled ir variegated iris. I wanted to have something a little more interesting than just a purple iris. I've done a lot of purple flowers recently. Um, and so with the RV69, I'm just using that to add those lines like what we saw in the inspiration photo. And 
on some of the ends of the lines, I'm just thickening up the ends. So I'll add kind of like almost like a triangular shape to thicken it up at the edges of the petal and it gets thinner as it goes in. So my lines aren't complete. I'm skipping the marker over the surface so that the lines are broken up like you would see in the photo to the left. So when you're making these lines, it's important to follow the shape of the petal. So Gracie has put in indications of those lines, those shapes, and so just follow along with those and you'll be good. So for the, the really yellow, solid yellow petals, I'm using Y00. I also use a little more of that Y13, and I bring in a YG21 to add a little bit of a yellow green tone to it. I will go back in off camera and add some shadow. Those, those, those petals ended up looking really flat to me because there was so much going on with the variegated petals that I went back in at, off camera and added some shadow with some warm gray markers. I think I just used W1 for that. So here you can see me putting in that yellow green. I end up blending that out with the Y13 so much that it, it just needed a little more dimension with the warm grays. So I have quite a bit of wet ink on that petal right now. So I just kind of fanned the cardstock out in the air to dry that ink because I wanted to add these really small detailed purple dots. If I had gone in while that was still wet, my dots would have been a little bit more blurry. So if you wait until your ink is dry, then you're gonna get a much more distinct dot. At least I think so, I don't know. I'm not an expert. I'm just letting you know what my thought process was there. So here we're going to um, add some clear embossing to our sentiment. So this is a really fine sentiment and this pin did so great, you guys. Um, I really loved it. So super easy to just trace your sentiment here. This pen has a nice firm tip, so it's easy to use, easy to control. And then we're just gonna use some clear, clear gloss embossing powder and heat that and this card will be done. So. For two of the cards, I made the background image smaller than A2 size so that I would have a white border around it, but all of these cards are one layer. I am in love with this card, you guys. I love that I was able to emboss this really fine sentiment, and you can see the detail there. And I really enjoyed adding the variegated details to this. The petal over on the right looks like a caterpillar to me. Like, it's so cool. Here's the set of cards. I hope you guys enjoyed these techniques to add heat embossing to your digital images and feel inspired to go out and try some of these. Try digital stamps if you haven't done that before and try adding embossing to your cards with these tools that are available to you. I will have a link to the Instagram hop down below. There is a $75 giveaway, so don't miss out. Make sure you hop along with us. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit the like button and share this video with your friends. They want to see it too. Thanks so much for stopping by. I'll see you real soon with more inspiration.